Okay, welcome everybody to today's mobility class. Let's come to stand. You might have a mat beneath your feet. I prefer bare feet or might be in uh, barefoot technology shoes, so minimalist footwear. But for any balance, any exercise, the closer we are to the ground, the closer we are to nature, the better. So if you are wearing really big padded trainers or walking shoes, see if you can get your body used to doing some exercise as naturally as possible. And let's stand. Let's do a quick overall scan of how we're feeling today, what we pick up on when we close our eyes, and take a look, a feel, a sensing on the inside. And you might notice, just to start with your weight distribution. Are you quite equally weighted on your left and right feet? If you were sinking into plasticine or moist sand, would you be sinking into the left or right more than the other? Another weight distribution feeling to consider is, is your weight more to your forefeet or more to your heels? Where's the imprint going? Then we can get more specific. Is it right heel and left forefoot? Or the outside of the right foot and the inside of the left foot? Suggesting you might be supinating one foot and pronating on the other? So checking in with how your weight is distributed through the greatest weight bearing joint, it comes down with the ankle, where the shin joins the foot, we call this the ankle joint. And there's 26 bones, each foot spreading out, supporting you. Okay, so perhaps with eyes open for a moment, <coughs> excuse me, we'll take this uh, visually as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if our weight is back on the heels, then you might find our posture is back and we're just slightly behind ourselves. Now without a mirror or you videoing yourself, this will be hard to see, but you might just get a sense. Yeah, I am a bit back. My alignment is a bit back. Where the chest can be dropped, the spine is compressed, the hip flexors are holding you up. Go any further back and you've got these tight hip flexors, which you need, otherwise you'd fall over. It may be you're a little more the other way and you tend to be a bit too much on the toes, or maybe you've got a bit of a hip hinge and you're too far forwards. Now there's an optimal. Judith Aston, one of my movement teachers, talks about a, a two to three forward lean, two to three degree forward lean. I think I'm about there right now if you were to check in with the video. Here's me more plumb, more upright. Here's me three degrees back. Here's me seven degrees forwards. So ideally we have this line, this alignment. So that's just something to check in with. Um, you could video yourself, get a tripod, get a smartphone and see your alignment and just check in that your default setting is not back. Forward is better because that's the beginning of all of our movements. And this can help, like I said, with the spine and all that. Okay, great. So let's focus on some pectoral, shoulder, bicep, forearm, wrist, fingertip, nerve gliding. We do this quite often in the warm-ups of the Monday night classes, but let's do it quite specifically here. We'll do one more sense before we start the nerve glide. So just come back to stand again. Notice your alignment, notice your weight distribution. And then get a sense of the breadth from chest bone to shoulders. The postural integrity of your upper ribs. 
Again, we use these classes to seek out a natural posture, what we call neutral in the Pilates world. It's what is most available and optimal for you. Some people are more deeper to the front and the chest bone and ribs have good integrity. Others are more hollowed out at the chest bone and rounded at the back. There is a middle place, a buoyant, efficient place. We'll check back in with that in a bit. So we know this one, a lot of you will know this technique. So we're gonna bring the left foot forwards and weight transfer over to that side. Bring in the pelvis and the chest bone and the vision that way. So pretty much the whole body is steering if it's left foot forwards to about 11 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock, not right round to the left completely. Relax your right arm, let it soften. There's a bend through the joints there. As you come forwards, as you bring your pelvis, if I was to grab my own pocket here, pull my pocket around, rib cage, chest bone and head go left still, but the right arm goes back to the right. So you begin to move the body forwards, then the shoulder blade moves back, then the elbow, then the wrist, then the hand, spread the digits apart, count to two seconds and then come back to the slack. So weight transfer, gently push into the ground, rotate your torso and pelvis and vision towards 10 o'clock, your right hand, your fingertips going back to about four o'clock. Couple of seconds, pause and we'll repeat. So at your own timing, Let's feel into this move. It's different than a muscle stretch. The clue's in the title, nerve gliding. The nerves are coated in a fascial sheath that they slide in. The connective tissues such as tendons. There's cartilage in the joints. There's ligaments. And the fascia's going from the skin through to the bone. So all these connective tissues get this fluid filled glide, this stretch, which will be different than holding on to a wall, or in this case a unit here, and just holding the stretch statically. Muscles can cope with that, but the connective tissues, the nerves, tendons, uh, fascia, don't like that so much. They all tend to tighten. So this is looking after multiple different cells of the body. Now we're doing an exaggerated time on this. Let's do a few more. You might vary the height that your hand is lower. Then it's more moderate height, chest height. Palm might face up a bit. You might find there's a time to take the arm higher. What can happen is the pelvis and chest bone go with the arm. Here's my chest bone and pubic bone facing out to one o'clock. We want the pelvis, the ribs, steering out to 11 for the counter stretch, the counter glide. Right chest bone, pec tendon, shoulder, bicep, right down to those fingertips, thumb tip. Okay, we'll take a little loosening. Now, before we change sides, We'll sense in, we'll also do a leg exercise and then we'll change sides. So just for a moment, we've done 20 of those, whatever, however many we've done. Just notice your breadth of chest muscles, length of arm, freedom of arm, energy flow. You get a comparison. And it can be that that side just feels more open, more free, more neutral, more comfortable, the neck's released. The whole side can feel different. Okay, if it feels any tighter, you've overstretched. You might have held too long or done too many. It should feel great. Let's do the right leg. Right foot forwards for this. Now this is a rolling spinal movement where you take the hip hinge, spine is curved in at first, you then bend your knee and rise, push the ground away to come up. And we're gonna create a wave type motion to lengthen some of the connective tissues at the back of the body, from calf to hamstring to glute to lower back, all the way up to the neck. 
Again, it takes a bit of rhythm to find this. We're more symmetrical with the body in a way. We're not doing any rotation here. But there's this nice rolling motion. It starts with the hip hinge. Legs pretty straight. Feel a nice light stretch there. Then soften the body. Soften the knees. Pelvis is tucked under. Chin is down. Shoulders rounded. For the rise up, this gentle push. So it becomes a wave. It's pretty seamless. If there was any pause in there, as you find your way down, you just slow down. It's, it's not even really a pause. Maybe at the up, there's a moment, half a second, before hip hinging, pretty straight leg, spine gently curved in, then soften. If you can go lower, that might feel appropriate. So push both feet down to gently rise up. Easy on the breathing. Perhaps exhale to flex. Begin to rise, inhale near the top. There's the hip hinge that starts the movement. Right leg pretty straight. Exhale to soften. Hands on the knees if you need more support. Let's do a few more. This happens naturally, but we can be conscious of a very subtle weave. Just a little bit of left to right at the hip joint. Left, right, left, right. So there's a micro rotation. It's mostly flexion extension. Judith Aston calls this feathering. This subtle three dimensional approach, like a feather dropping or then being blown up by the wind and then dropping back down. To the naked eye, it looks like you're moving in a more straight line, but you know internally that there's this subtle play. All right, when ready, let's come up and give that a bit of a shake out. So right chest to fingertips, right back of body to heel to Achilles. Let's check in with this. Come to stand. You might close your eyes for a moment. Do the legs feel different? Because that's part of our body awareness, our proprioception, where we are in space, body consciousness, which is important for exercise, but just in daily life, being aware of our body, more present. Okay, great. So nerve glide for upper body, left side. When ready, perhaps just the pelvis even first and, and torso. We're steering the body towards the one o'clock. Three o'clock would be steering right out. 11 o'clock would be steering that way, which might tend to happen, but get a hold of yourself, bring your pelvis around, bring your ribs around, your vision around. So that's the beginning is where we're going. It's a bit like we're picking something up or doing a squat in part of our gait. However, as part of this, we're now unfolding all those connective tissues that from our life maybe it's using secateurs in the garden maybe it's driving reading using a mouse a keyboard and a computer an ipad our forearms our connective tissues our biceps can get short wrists can get tight let's put fluid and space in here gently push the ground away rotate and unfold and how does this side feel it might be a different location of stretch um, it was more the wrist on my right arm it's more the lower bicep for my left arm today that's where some of the fascia might be a bit bunched up this connective tissue that holds all the cells together penetrating like I said from skin to bone and we're gently nourishing this this glide this self massage we could say so we're checking that the chest bone is going with the pubic bone over to the right a bit. You unfold the blade, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the digits spread. Short pause on this one. Then you're back to slack, soften, like an elastic band going slack. And you slowly take that elastic band or many elastic bands into stretch before releasing and softening. 
what can happen at the end of the movement is the wrist gets forgotten. Let the wrist gently go back. So this whole chain of connective tissue gets gently stretched. We allow flexibility to come in time. It's best not to rush. Okay, so perhaps we'll do a couple more of these. On the replay, you could pause and do more or fast forward and do less to match what you feel your body needs and the time you have. But gentle nourishing and loosening movements. 10, 20, 30 minutes. You can do little pockets of movements, but these can be done daily or at least a few times a week. Okay, perhaps a little shake out, a little loosening out. Just before we go to the left leg, let's unite the left and right side with a double upper body glide where we flex and extend. Bit of weaving in there, rounding out your posture, elbows bent, pelvis tucked under, then spring, slow motion extension, soften to middle, perhaps one more time back to flex, integrating the left and right. Coming back to center. All right, so great left leg, hamstring, calf, spine, nerve glide. Might take you a few goes to get the rhythm of this. But we rise up. There's the hip hinge that starts to move and weight goes back to the heel. Hopefully you feel a nice stretch, back of the leg. Then you soften that stretch, you release, you unroll, you hip hinge. And it becomes this wave of motion. Breathing in to come up near the top. Bit of weaving, bit of soaring, left to right, subtly. Some movements you might go lower, some less deep. Sometimes we focus on the, the joints more. Recently we've done that a nice bit with the spine and shoulders and hips. This is more connective tissue, fascia, nerves, tendons, muscles, some, some of the soft tissues of the body. And when they're eased, when they're nourished, when they're looked after, the joints naturally become more comfortable. We're all on the same side. This harmony of body movement. So feel this rhythm. What's the tempo? Maybe a bit slower or quicker than my demonstration. So as always, just feel your body, close your eyes if you can, or just look at the floor when you're lowering. If you're not crooking your neck to look at the screen, just feel your own body. Perhaps we'll do a couple more. Do a nice extended amount of time on this. During a warm up, we might do half a dozen. Perhaps we're doing 20 of these. Easy on the breathing. Or come up and shake out. Great, so let's unite the left and right. More equally, I'll show you side on first. But can we get a bit of a wave going through the extension to flexion? So chin's up like a banana leaf. And the tip of the banana leaf stays up and then tucks down. Can you find a version, an expression of this rolling movement? Again, maybe slower or quicker. Bit of a weave in there. If it feels uncomfortable, you're just going too low, or maybe this isn't for you today. But a smaller movement would be fine. If you can hip hinge deeper, then soften the knees, then tuck the pelvis under. Lower back pushes out, round out through. Perhaps we'll just do a few more of these. And then in your own time. We'll bring this through, we'll unroll, we'll circle both arms right up. And let's stretch. This will bring us into the next moving exercise for the waist, for the lats. But another quick check in again. So opportunity to, again, if you just open your eyes for a moment, it may be your default to be a little bit back. I'll exaggerate not um, naming names or pointing fingers, you might know this is, can be your tendency at the end of the day, or even in the mornings, 
or maybe your tendency to be a bit forwards, we're looking to find out this slight forward lean, a degree or two or three forwards. Knees are buoyant, not locked back. Pelvis is relaxed, abdomen is relaxed, shoulders are relaxed. We've done the exercise now, so you're in a better stead to have a good alignment. You might feel long and free in the hamstrings. You might feel open at the pecs, long and free through the arms. That's why we do these nerve glide moves, is for freedom, is flow, moving the fluid, breaking down tensions. Great techniques to do before and after. Any, any chores, maybe gardening, even a long drive, you can neutralize your body with these moves after sport, before and after a workout. Okay, so with a wide stance, let's take right arm to the side. This is, it's a, it's a side stretch, it's a side bend, which we have done a bit of in recent videos. So it's less of a nerve glide, but we're building this up to a higher range. We'll end up with three pushes. Right now there's one, and then release. Push to ground away. So this is about timing. This is about coordination. So you're on your right arm, weight shifting right. Now can you come up and then push off the back foot? You weight shift and you push. You're to the right, left foot pushes down. So one, two, and there's a gentle internal reaction. You could say like a soft impact. You come up and that push right there kicks into those ribs, those lats. So this does have a little bit more of a tempo, a little more dynamic, we could say. Perhaps the arm goes slightly further over. One, two, three at the knees. Push the legs one, reload, reload, reload. Use your knees, ankles and hips to direct the flow of this side bend. So this is a more dynamic stretch. Open chain, free, maybe lower to match your shoulder flexibility. But you're using the ground to create the space. Nice number of repetitions. Less would be fine, lower would be fine. The first movement only is fine. But can you get the rhythm without looking at the screen? Three bounces, one to get there, two for the right foot to push off, three, sorry, one to the right foot, two left foot, then both knees land. Right foot pushes, left foot pushes, both knees soften. Okay, that's a nice energizing move there. So lats, ribs, down through the waist, abdominal muscles on the side here. Let's loosen that out and feel the tone, energy. I feel a bit lopsided, but that side feels uh, supportive. These mobility classes are equally about posture as they are flexibility. These are postural enhancing techniques. And to have good posture, we need some integrity and tone around the sides of the body, part of our core really. So left side starts with a weight shift and push. Single push, not too high. Can you catch the wave, the rhythm of this? Because it may be that you move the leg and then the arm follows afterwards, or you reach with the arm and then push the knee down and you're kind of out of timing a bit, a bit discombobulated. This can happen, and this is why we're doing all these movements to enhance our proprioception, our knowing of body, where we are in space, what's available, where can we move without trying to force the body. When ready, we'll get ready for that extra push. Left foot pushes, right foot kicks in. Left foot pushes, right foot kicks in. One, two, and as you land back, there's a little third dip at the knees. It doesn't have to be too far over with that arm, but it can get a little more animated. If there's tempo in this range and your left shoulder is feeling very flexible, you'll have more height and more tempo. 
for a dynamic stretch of muscles around the sides of the body. Again, lower, slower, smaller, may suit. Really nice, just ease the shoulder in the socket there. Ease the elbow, ease the wrist. These would be fine. Otherwise, perhaps a few more here. One, two, three. You're continuously pumping the fluid of the body and the lymph by movement, by bouncing. It's hydrating for the body, it's nourishing. Okay, might find your heart rate's coming up a little bit. You might fancy a bit of a workout after this. Okay, let's shake that through. And once again, perhaps we'll lift both arms up and just integrate with a bit of rotation, extension and flexion slightly. Uh, side bending. And let's bring this down and shake free. All right, great. Feel that. So the, some of the muscles, some under the blade around the ribs, serratus anterior. These have had a bit of movement, the intercostal muscles, the lats down to the waist. Just sense that. You might feel more up, rested up. Not pulled up and held up. Not a bit down and slumped. Sometimes we can be in through our lifestyle, through our emotions for many reasons, our sports even, our job. But this is about neutralizing your body. It's available. Body can change, body adapts to its environment. Walk with good gait, sit with good posture, take plenty of time to stretch out, be conscious of your body, and your posture will naturally improve. Your flexibility will improve. Niggles, compressed bits should, should go away. So yes, yeah, sense your body, feel this, feel your energy, feel your flow. Okay, great. So I'm just sensing now to close our class. I think we'll keep standing today, the way it's working out. Let's just do a little bit of length for the front of the legs, where we have a couple of choices. If, you, if it is available for you to do a quadricep stretch, this is where you bring your knee up, you slide your hand to the shin, lower shin, front of ankle, and then the knee is in front, I'm using my right leg here, holding onto the wall with my left elbow, left hand, just supporting. And from that slack position, can we gently breathe in and stretch front of thigh, hip flexors, tummy, pecs again, bicep a bit, multi-stretch before slackening. Now you can hold onto the back of a sock or a trouser or loop something around. Another choice which is similar is to put the back foot down, if it's not available today for your knee flexibility, is to put the right foot down and push the pelvis forwards gently. Maybe extend and then slacken and push down to extend that way. So that's an alternative version. We're slackening, we're weaving, we're moving a bit there with the hip joint. The, the soft elastic band, it's gone slack and then you gently inhale. Check your knees not too far out, knees just in line. Can the knee go behind the hip? Hip extension. Don't need to hold for too long before we slacken and soften. This ebb and flow of stretching. The foot could go further away. You could lean in a bit. Maybe a couple more this side. There's extension of spine. Your tummy is getting stretched. Pec major of the side, once again getting stretched. Okay, great stuff. Bit of a shake out. Another opportunity to pause. We get short term change. There's probably more length in the front of your right thigh. You might feel a bit imbalanced. Some of this new flexibility goes back to being a bit shorter as the day and the week continues, but a little bit stays. Okay, so left side use the wall use the back of a chair for balance if you want to let's extend the hip joint the knees behind the hip the heels towards the buttock soften 
If this was towards the end of a Monday night fitness class, then um, we'd be going for a stronger feeling, a stronger pull. The muscles would have been uh, challenged and very warm, deep into the muscles. We're not warmed up here. This is just an easy stretch, a nice light bit of length for the connective tissues in the front of the left thigh. Again, you can weave and slacken and soften. If this knee doesn't have the flexibility to hold on to what's painful or stretches too strong, you could try the alternate version, which is where you have the back heel, the back, back ball of foot down, heel is up, and you kind of just push the pelvis forwards, gently extend. We're getting a nice hip flexor stretch in my left here, and then you can slacken and soften. So that's another version. Closed chain, quite a nice version actually. Less on the quads, more on the hip flexors, but similar area. Softening the body to flexion for the out breath, and then pulling that back to inhale and stretch. Am I already a good shake out there? All right, perhaps all over shake out. Pelvis, shoulders, head a little bit. A few bounces maybe, toes can stay down but heels could bounce on the ground. Ankles, wrists, elbows. And then land, stand and land. Grounded, nice alignment, nice sense of body integrity, nice posture. Perhaps just close your eyes and feel what's happening for you right now. Okay, so really well done. Good session of stretching. However long we take, about half an hour or so. Come back to this video when you need to. Look up other mobility videos. This is about number 11, I think. So lots in the archive. Have a great day. Keep supple. We'll see you soon. Take care.